<laughs> All right, we're going to get cracking here tonight because we've got a long chapter to go. So I'm going to start for January 13th with Acts 13. I'm going to start first with prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would open our minds and our hearts to your word. I pray that your Holy Spirit will be our, our teacher and author tonight. And uh, allow us to learn what you would have us learn from this reading. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. In the church of Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menane, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga, and from Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. From Perga, they went on to Pisidian, Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. Now, that's just a side note here. They, the teacher sits. So unlike uh, modern teaching, Greek teaching, or er, not Greek, um, Modern teaching, the teachers stand and the students sit. Back then, the teacher sat. <laughs> I guess they were given that privilege. Um, so where did I leave off? Okay. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them saying, Brothers, if you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who worship God, Listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our fathers. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of the country. He endured their conduct for about 40 years in the desert. He overthrew seven nations in Canaan and gave their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel, the prophet. And then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled for 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not the one, no, but he is coming after me, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, children of Abraham, and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. In condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophets that they that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. 
But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our fathers, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second Psalm, you are my son. Today I have become your father. The fact that God raised him from the dead, never to de- never to de- I can't sit, talk. The fact that God raised him from the dead, never to decay, is stated in these words. I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers from his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything you could not be from everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. Take care that what the prophets have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, Many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and talked abusively against what Paul was saying. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, We now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy with the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's a powerful reading. <clears throat> the, you know what I kind of noticed as I was reading through all that? They, they talked about when King David died, they used the term, he fell asleep. And we know in the New Testament, lots of times they'll, when somebody dies, they'll use the term, they fell asleep versus die. And the reason for that is because they believed that somebody who had no hope of salvation through God was, was hopeless. They were dead. They were dead to God. And so they were truly dead. They, they were not, there was no hope for them where somebody who believed in God and trusted in his salvation through Jesus Christ, even, even the old Testament, but they knew that God was going to provide a savior. So it was held in account for them for in the future, when the savior came, they weren't considered dead. They were considered alive. And, and, and that's why the term is used that we are, we are dead in our sins when we do not repent and turn to Christ for our savior we are dead in God's eyes because at that point we are hopeless. We, we, we have chosen the, the wrong path. We have not chosen the path of life. And so if we are to die in our sins without hope, we are truly dead. But if we die with our sins being forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us on the cross, then we have salvation and and we we are asleep for the t- until the time when we are alive again in Christ and there is an eternal time coming where we will always be alive and enjoy with God because his his holy presence is, is nothing but love and we have the opportunity to share the rest of eternity with him when we make that choice so I don't know. That's kind of a neat lesson tonight. I didn't know what we were getting into with that. Hi, Paula. You're welcome. So 
I'm going to wrap this up a little bit early tonight. I came on early and I got a scoot. We have a small group meeting at seven and I've got one minute to get there. And um, that's, it's just a busy evening. I've got other things going on tonight, but I wanted, that's an important lesson. And if you listening are unsure about your relationship with God, if you're unsure about your salvation, if you're unsure, if your sins are forgiven, then it's this is this is a good time. This is the time. I wouldn't wait another day. I would not wait another day to turn to God and say, God, I'm a mess. I am a mess. I've made a mess of my life. I've made a mess by not being in relationship with you. And um and I repent. I'm sorry. I have sinned and I need your salvation through Jesus Christ. I need for you to pay the price for me because I can't do it. Only God can pay the price to a holy God. And he was willing to do that for us. So accept that gift from God. Tell him that you're a sinner. Accept that gift from God, the gift of redemption, of salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank Jesus for what he's done for you. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for me. And I re I receive your forgiveness. I receive your salvation. And I ask for your Holy Spirit to fill me. And I speak death to all that was old. I speak death to sin. I do not want to be a part of it anymore. I hate that old part of my life. And I want to live a new life in you. So I pray that if, if anybody has made that decision, I ask that you contact me somehow like make a comment down below and we can talk further and I would love to pray for you personally and we will make a way of even talking on the phone if we have to. Um, there's, there's no reason why you can't have assurance. There's no reason why you can't have confidence in God and, and you don't have to go through this life hoping that you're good enough because we can never be good enough. We, we can't go to church enough times. We can't say enough prayers. We can't read enough Bible. We can't do enough good deeds to get ourselves into heaven. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. We let God change us from the inside out. And then those outward things will happen. But it doesn't work from the outside in. Doing those things are not going to change who we are in here. We have to let God change who we are inside. And that's what Paul talks about. Remember I told you about grace a few days ago? Grace is God's divine influence upon our heart. He's changing us from the inside out. And it's reflection in our life. Who are we now? We are different and new people. We are truly born again. We're going to die to that old life. So I, I pray that somebody will make that decision to be saved and not to be dead. You don't want to be dead in your sins. You want to be alive in Christ in a new life. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you for everyone for being here. Paula LaRay and Mama Bear and a few other people I don't see. All right. God bless you and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>